بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Hello students in this lecture we will talk about three major types of cognitive behavioral therapies that are quite interconnected uh, i requested the clinical psychologist working in lahore to tell us about these three therapies uh, hence in this video you will listen from her as well uh, but let me first revise something that is related and that uh, you have already studied in your class uh, but it will help you to understand whatever she will talk about later on okay um, what we know about cognition the words you are seeing here on the slide uh, now almost at the end of the course you are quite well versed about these words uh, in connection with cognition and cognitive psychology <clears throat> well uh, how do you perceive and how can something affect our perception how our thoughts process and how we memorize and how we recall anything how do we feel and how do we judge and what we judge actually and uh, how do we evaluate something uh, how do we learn and how do we understand how do we acquire knowledge and how do we create and understand language and the most important how do we think so we have gone through almost all of these questions during the course and uh, uh, but with reference to this particular lecture uh, i will just devise something about uh, rational and irrational thoughts that will help you later on okay we know that uh, we may have rational and irrational thoughts we may have logical or illogical thoughts but that is what we are created this is how we are created we are human beings and we are created in that way and that is how our brain works the way we have irrational and rational thoughts we can also interpret same way we may have rational interpretation of our irrational thoughts and we have irrational interpretation of our rational thoughts whatsoever and vice versa we may have rational interpretation of our rational thoughts as well so we think and uh, we also try to interpret it but sometimes we ended up in irrational interpretation as well this is all about the complexity of our thought system uh, in one of the class i discussed a little bit about magical thinking and uh, uh, we talk about the law of similarity and law of contact Uh, and how does it work it is especially meaningful uh, the situation nowadays we are having mm, well the irrational thought that can reduce anxiety when we experience some unexplained threat but the same way the irrational thoughts can increase our anxiety such as in ocd uh, we may have increased anxiety due to irrational thoughts um well uh, let us uh, think about something uh, for example i must be loved by everyone whom i meet how does it sound do do you think it is a rational thought very logical or this is irrational thought okay i hope you can recall the discussion we had about this in our class uh, let's move on if a loves b it is not necessary and possible that b should also love a there could be so many reasons for for this this statement uh, there might be difference of the perceptions there might be the difference of the priorities there might be the bad experience in the past uh, that is driving us to dislike something and there may be many more reasons well now should we think that we must be loved by everyone we meet even though the person disliking us may have irrational thoughts such as prejudices presumptions but even then 
we cannot think like this that we should be loved by everyone whom we meet okay uh, similarly i am a complete failure and i am the best and i must succeed these thoughts also does not uh, link yourself with your with the rational thinking or the logical thinking now um, let's let's see something uh, here you you will see uh, how you see our own experience uh, that can make us think rationally or irrationally for example um, in in this uh, in this picture you are seeing a script uh, you made soup for your child uh, soup was bad and you thought it is awful then you thought if you cannot even make soup what type of a cook you are a terrible cook and then if you cannot even make soup for your your child your own child what kind of a mother you are a bad mother and then you feel you are a complete failure and here your thinking is also affecting your emotions your mood in a negative way now the therapist will look into how you reach this core belief and then once the therapist is able to read the script therapist can help you to think rationally and positively and that will definitely affect your behavior and your emotions okay uh, now i will stop here and miss aisha shahid sheikh a clinical psychologist working in lahore uh, will tell you more about it and uh, thank you Assalamu alaikum uh, everybody my name is Aisha Shahid Sheikh and I am a clinical psychologist by profession today we are going to talk about different kind of cognitive therapies um that actually came into being and how they promoted and help in developing the new therapies that we are all practicing these days as clinical psychologists so i am going to talk about three major therapies uh, which include cognitive behavior therapy by donald mishenbaum uh rebt rational motor behavior therapy by albert ellis and cognitive therapy by aaron tebak so when we talk about the cognitive uh, you know aspect of therapy in the early 1950s um scientists psychiatrists and psychologists all started working on the fact that how our thoughts are processed and how we do we process different kind of information and emotions so that we are able to you know behave in a certain way so what happened was that donald mishenbaum uh, proposed a theory of cognitive behavioral modification uh in which he uh, uh, actually followed a process through which he wanted to have uh, the process of behavioral modification done uh of his clients by working on the thought process uh now the, the the important thing that you need to understand here is that his therapy or his behavioral modification technique helped in development of the latest cognitive behavior therapy that we're using up till now and if we talk about donald mishenbaum his uh contribution in the treatment of post uh, post traumatic stress at that time in the early 1950s was very significant so um, the cbm the cognitive behavior modification therapy it significantly contributed uh, in the development of cbt and uh, it focusing focuses on the negative self talk and and uh, and focuses on producing a life narrative uh, which can entail positive self talk as well so if we talk about this therapy or cognitive behavior modification uh it it majorly follows three main steps in which one has to you know look forward or look into the thought process that they're having they need to illustrate if they are having negative self talk or positive self talk and if they are having negative self talk then they'll have to process the negative self talk and work on it um uh, if we talk about cognitive behavior modification Uh, it is also called that it is kind of self instruction instructional therapy uh, what does that mean it means that the client has to do the major work the therapist would be there to only guide them to a certain level and not beyond that 
and the client has to focus on the cognitive errors and what uh, what the major chunk over here is that the client has to work on their own and the therapist does not have a lot of say in how the therapist is going to go in in what direction or in, at what pace the therapist the the client should uh, um, you know proceed with with this kind of uh, therapy yeah so this is donald meshenbem's um, cbd uh, the major thing and major important thing here is that it actually promoted uh, in the development of cognitive behavior therapy which is the uh, one of the latest and most common used therapy all over the world uh, and this uh, was its uh, this was its um, foundation all right let's move on let's move on to REBT which is rational emotive behavior therapy uh, rational emotive behavior therapy was introduced in around 19, 1955 again in 1950s 1950s and 1960s was uh, one of the times these two decades were very famous for the development of cognitive therapies so uh, REBT rational motive behavior therapy was introduced by Albert Ellis um, and uh, it it gained a lot of popularity at that time because it it hailed from a philosophical concept and it focused a lot on the change uh, produced by therapy and on the benefit of the client that uh, a therapist is going to work with. So it is one of the major popular therapies of that time in, in the era of 60s and 70s. And again, uh, CBT is an, uh, uh, is an offshoot of IBT as well. So uh, when Albert started working in, uh, in this module, he started by naming it as rational therapy or RT, where he worked on the rational thought process and irrational thought process. Then he found that uh, along with the illogical or logical or rational or rational thoughts, there are a number of emotions that a person is um, facing as well. So he added an E in the RT, so it became rational emotive therapy, RET. Later on, when he started working on it, he also noticed that people are supposed to behave in a certain way when they're, you know, when they're facing some, some kind of certain emotion and when they're kind, they're kind of having a certain kind of thought pattern. So again, then he finally added a B in this acronym as well. So it became REBT, Rational Motor Behavior Therapy, and this is how we know about it uh, till now. Um, it has a Socratic style of therapy, which means that the, the therapist would be involved in the therapy. The therapist would lead the, the client to a certain place and they would guide them to proceed to a certain level. So this is its uh, manifestation. Another thing that is very important is that it, is fo it has a major focus on philosophical aspects. So there's a lot of philosophy in REBD. The person has to see a no number of philosophies. They have to go through a number of philosophical concepts while, while working with the thought process. So it's kind of relatable to many people as well. And in the 60s, 70s, when the philosophy was very much in fashion, people were able to relate to it on a deeper level. So uh, again, this is how, why it became so popular. Uh, another important thing is that it highlights secondary disturbance. For example, if there is, you know, uh, if we are talking about Donald's um, cognitive behavioral modification, it talks about the major chunk or major error that one person will be seeing. But in, in RABT, we talk about the secondary disturbances that one might be having and it highlights it, which means that the person would be able to get rid of the major chunk of the problem that they're currently facing but they able, they'd be able to tackle the secondary issues that would be going along with the major issue as well. So this is how Albert Ellis moved on. Uh, there are a number of techniques that, um, and that are used in this uh, process. Uh, some of them include disputing, referenting, uh, pros and cause benefit, benefit analysis, uh, charting, diary making. These are uh, a few techniques 
but disputing, refronting, these are the most um, commonly used techniques. Uh, we also use modeling in RMBT. So every client has their own problem and the, you know, the therapy techniques are used according to, to the severity and symptoms as well. So that was about RDVT. Now I'm going to move forward towards cognitive therapy. So you all, I think most of you would have heard about CBT, a cognitive behavior therapy. But before a B was inserted in CBT, it was only cognitive therapy and it was proposed by uh, Aaron T. Beck. Dr. Beck, he is very famous uh, and cognitive therapy actually exploded into, expanded into CBT, cognitive therapy and which is actually one of the most famous techniques all over the world which is used by uh, most um, psychological issues all over the world as well. So cognitive therapy, CT, uh, is based on cognitive model which states that thoughts, feelings, and behaviors of a person are all interconnected. And uh, what happened in CB, C, CT was that Beck divided uh, the beliefs of a person or beliefs of mind on three levels. Number one is automatic thought, number two is intermediate belief, and number three is core belief or basic belief. Automatic thought is any thought that comes into your mind. Intermediate belief is a belief that would cater another, another happening or another thought process or any, any other behavior. And then comes core belief or basic belief, a belief system that would have uh, triggered all the automatic thoughts and intermediate beliefs. So if somebody has a problematic core belief, their automatic thoughts would be problematic and their intermediate belief would be affected by it as well. So one needs to work on all these notions while working through CT or CBT. All right. Then if somebody has problematic core beliefs, what is being done is that uh, the, the therapist helps them in the restructuring of the cognitive belief system. So it is called cognitive restructuring and it, it involves four steps. Number one is um, identification of problematic cognitions or problematic thoughts which are called automatic thoughts. Uh, mostly automatic thoughts are dysfunctional or negative in nature. They would be illogical in nature and the person would be seeing themselves or their world in a negative negative way. Um, their belief system about the world and their own self might be distorted in this condition as well. So which means that if somebody has a problematic automatic thought um, their perception towards the world would be affected and they might not be able to help others in the full way. Okay, then comes uh, identification of the cognitive distortions. Uh, if there is an automatic thought, then we'll have to see what kind of cognitive distortion one person is having. Because CT uh, introduces six types of cognitive distortion or cognitive errors which can help in creating automatic thought process. So we identify those cognitive distortions and then what we do is the next step is that we rationally dispute the automatic thoughts with a Socratic method. Now most of you might be thinking that it is quite same and like that of REBT um, but the problem here is that because these are all interlinked and most of these people, the three people we have talked about they actually worked with each other in one way or other so their therapies are very much similar as well but but the major thing is that every therapy has a major chunk which actually differentiates it from the other therapy as well so um, like the way um, uh, behavioral modification by Donald uh, it focuses on behavioral modification and thought errors only the negative self-talk uh, in RBT uh, it focuses on the philosophical event and you know philosophical aspect and disputing of the thoughts and CT in, in Beck's uh, cognitive therapy uh, we work on automatic thoughts and cognitive errors and we actively you know work through it, through them so um, the fourth step here is that um, uh, what we do is that we attribute the negative thought error uh, with the automatic thought and then we 
um, provide it with a rational response. So our automatic thought or thought error is weakened and when it is weakened it does not affect our emotions and our mood in a way that it was doing it earlier on. So all these three uh, therapies are being used somewhat uh, in the original form up till now but most of them have developed in a certain way as well. If we talk about uh, Dordal machine bumps, um, uh, behavioral modification, cognitive behavioral modification, it is not that much widely practiced, but it is practiced by some people who are more focused on treating post-traumatic stress disorder or any other trauma that people would have gone through. And then comes um, rational motivated therapy, REBT is actually used uh, in, in its original form and then we have CT, CT has now developed into CBT and we have a number of um, pointers that we uh, work on while, while using CBT as well. So here it was, um, it was a summary of the major and the former cognitive therapies that were being introduced in the late 1950s and 60s and then they were being practiced all over the world and now they have developed into <coughs> a secondary or third wave of therapeutic analysis or therapeutic uh, processes. That's all. Thank you very much.